Hello everyone, I thought I would send out a, a video message just to bring you up to date with what's going to be happening on Sunday mornings to the end of the year. I mean, it's all in the email that accompanies this, but I'm aware from past experience, uh, some people prefer to just hear things via a, a video message like this. So here we go. Well, I want to start with a quotation from two wonderful Psalms. Psalm 96, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Wonderful. And Psalm 100, verse 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Now, I know those of us that have been able to gather over the last three weeks in church have had the joy after this long period of restrictions of being able to sing God's praise, uh, both old songs and new songs. And it's been a wonderful thing. And I look forward to more and more of you who haven't yet experienced that coming along and experiencing it. Now, over the last weeks, last few weeks, I've met with the ministry leadership team. Uh, that's Reverend Anne and Faye and Malcolm Alley Reader. And I've had conversations with our church wardens and many, many other conversations about what should happen in terms of Sunday services to the end of the year. Because at the beginning of September, we were to resume the two service pattern, a 9 a.m. formal service of the word led by the band at 1030. And it is clear that many of us want to worship as a single congregation from September, as we're still in very uncertain times and still emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, it's not over yet. However, there are very diverse preferences, agendas and expectations about what that one service might be. And especially, I'm being honest, no point in not being, especially challenging is music, sung worship. And I want at this point to remind everyone of a crucial element that's perhaps understandably been rather absent from the views that have been shared with me and the conversations that I've had. So here's an important point I want to make at this juncture. The vision and purpose behind the two service structure for Sunday mornings that we had before the pandemic was not about meeting the present congregation's musical, liturgical and time preferences. And future decisions won't be hanging on that either. But it was about accessibility to worship. It was about mission and growth. It was very much in terms of thinking of those we want to be able to access what happens in Sunday worship and understand what's going on when people gather to worship God. So we had the two types of service for that reason. So with this in mind, along with the many conversations of the last weeks and recognising, of course, that we're in, we face very specific challenges in this period of transition away from the pandemic's restrictions. Uh, there's a particular season and time we're in and circumstance. So the PCC uh, last Tuesday unanimous, unanimously adopted a proposal I'd brought for a Sunday service structure to see us through to the end of the year, into January, when we will look again. And it's for a single 10.30 a.m. service each Sunday morning. And as things settle in the coming months, I will look again at how we might best progress our vision for Sunday worship further into 2022. So the proposal is to continue with a pattern of Sunday services that's very similar to that which has been there during the COVID-19 restrictions. But uh, to continue this on, there will be uh, need to be some level of change and adaptation to both the Holy Communion service and service of the word as they would have resumed in September otherwise. Service of the word will need to perhaps tone down a little the sung worship and it will need to become a communion service each week as well, which it wasn't obviously before. And formal communion will be a little, a little less formal. One service, you know, does not automatically mean one congregation. It could lead 
to a preference rather than mission driven dividing two congregations staking their claim to this uh, Sunday morning slot and going to the service that they want. It, I mean, I'm not saying that's what will happen. And I know we've got a good core of people for whom that's not true. And for others, it will be more true because they'll struggle. But what the key point is, one Sunday morning service doesn't necessarily lead us to one wonderful together congregation. It remains to be seen how this will all work out. And certainly my prayer is that the congregation will worship as one. Sung worship is both a blessing, as we've discovered these last weeks, but it can be a challenge to us when it's not perhaps what we particularly like. My hope and prayer is that we will see a unity and oneness that so, that, that, that so many have spoken of to me with great feeling, and I've respected that. You know, there's been many that have spoken to me. I know we'd have to compromise, but we just need to be one. And I respect the sentiment and the passion with which that's been shared. So we will see. So the pattern of worship, to be specific, will be the first Sunday of the month, 10.30, in formal communion, led by the worship band. There'll be even song that first Sunday, organ and choir, obviously, at 6 p.m. The second Sunday of the month will be a more formal communion with the organ and choir leading the worship. Third Sunday, an informal communion, again, the worship band, but third Sunday, there'll be some youth involvement. And fourth Sunday, again, a more formal communion with organ and choir. There is actually one fifth Sunday, which we've still to work out what we will do on that fifth Sunday. It's the end of October, actually, 31st of October. So that's the pattern. It's set out in the email that I've sent to you. And, uh, and I want to ask and pray that we really listen to each other and to God through this season so that we can be prepared as things settle down and we get a sense of where we, who's going to be gathering and where we are, how God might lead us forward back to being a vision, to a vision of mission, outreach and growth. So that's the prayer. And that's the prayer I'm going to lead you in now. Say, bow your heads with me, if you would. Father, we commit to you this pattern of uh, worship that will see us through to the end of the year and into January. We ask, Lord, that we will learn, uh, that we will bless each other and that we will bring a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving that's pleasing to you. So, Father, we offer you ourselves in this strange and uncertain transitional time asking for your blessing, that we might be a blessing to those you've placed us amongst. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. See you all soon, I trust. Bye for now.